item on our agenda tonight is adjustments to agenda. Are there any school board members that have any adjustments to our agenda? <coughs> Anybody in the audience that has anything, any adjustments? Okay. The second item, approval of school board minutes meeting of Tuesday, December 10th, 1991. Any additions or corrections to those minutes? Oh, there is, I think, one in which the date 1992 should appear as the date for the move rather than 93, unless I am laboring <laughs> under misapprehension uh, for either the kindergarten or the eighth grade. It would be 92. It's 92. Okay, that's a correction. Okay. Any others? Okay, the minutes stand approved. Uh, I imagine that most of you are here about the space study issue, and that will come under the superintendent's report, item B. So um, we'll be to that in just a very short time. <coughs> Comments by the middle school representatives, please. <coughs> Sophomore sponsored a dance for the 7th and 8th graders last Friday. The 6th grade is working with Gretchen Berg at the Pond Cove School. We are working on a play to present before the students of Pond Cove. The performance date is January 24th. The can drive and the food and clothing donation to benefit the Salvation Army during the holidays was a great success. I would like now to introduce James Kittredge who has been named school board representative to replace Lauren Gibbons. James. Hello, I'm Hi. James Kittredge, and uh, a few notes that I have here. Um, subsequent to school board approval this morning in our uh, student council meeting, uh, we decided to support the indoor track triple C meet, triple C meet at the expo. Um, and Recently, the boys' basketball season has just ended, and the girls has just started. They've started practicing, and their games are starting soon. And seventh and eighth grade swimming will be starting fairly soon. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, high school representatives. As always, January is a particularly busy month at the high school. The second quarter will end this Friday, and midterms are to be held next week with, with two exams scheduled for each day over a period of four days. Also this month, many of the programs discussed by the SAC are getting underway, including meeting with parents to discuss curriculum and developing some sort of system for evaluating teachers and classes. Another special event will be a semi-formal dance sponsored by the senior class held this Saturday night at the high school. At our last SAC meeting, Lori and I brought up the question of whether the eighth grade or the kindergarten should move into the high school within the next few years. Um, the SAC unanimously voted for the kindergarten moving into the high school. Um, some reasons were that it was easier to isolate the kindergartens from the high school children um, spatially and socially. Um, there was also concern that the eighth graders would be put into a negative environment um, from being around older children. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> this, and the sophomore class talked about their experiences and said, and when they were in the kindergarten um, and the, in the high school, and they said it was worthwhile. And so I hope these reasonings could be considered. Thanks. Yes, they will be. Thanks very much. <clears throat> the business manager's report. Thank you and good evening. Uh, page 46 in your agenda outlines the general program revenues for year to date. Uh, this is a six month report. Uh, as of December 31st, we have received $4.4 .4 million or 48% of our anticipated revenues. Uh, we were informed last week that the state will cut. Cape Elizabeth's uh, general subsidy by $131,000 plus uh, $14,000 in teacher certification grants. Any questions on the revenues? Following two pages outline the, the expenditure report for the same program. Uh, we have expended 50% of our budget. 
uh, based on last two years' uh, uh, reports, at this time we are pretty much on target. As far as the federal and state programs are concerned, we anticipate $204,000 in, in uh, subsidies as far as grants. Uh, to date, we have received $139,000. We do anticipate to receive the balance of these except for the certification grant. Charlie? Sure. Charlie? I have a question about the teacher certification grants. At this point in time, we've already spent about $3,000. What's, what's the anticipation for the rest of that amount being expended? Uh, what I propose to do is that the 3000 will be transferred to the general program. Okay. Uh, food services, uh, Janu uh, December not being a, a great month as far as revenues, it was only like 15 or 16 days of school. Uh, we did take in or had revenues of $24,000. Our expenditures for the month were 32000 for a, a decrease of $7,900 as far as cash is concerned. To date, we have received $122,000 in cash with expenditures of $135,000 with a cash decrease or shortfall of $13,807. However, the following page outlines the fund balance for the same period. And comparing 1991 to 1990, I'm sorry, 91, 92 to 1990, 91, we have a positive cash a fund balance of $6,000 compared to a negative $12,680 for last year. Or a, de or a difference of $18,000 to the plus. Uh, hopefully January will be a great month for revenues. It is quite long. Uh, the following three pages outline the community services report for the same period. Uh, to date, Sue and her staff have collected $364,000 and have expended $270,000. Any questions on community service, Charlie? Under her summer expenditures, uh, which is the second page of her budget report. She has printing, postage, and travel uh, requested expended, uh, requested funds, and she has not spent those. Is this anticipation of for the summer coming up, which would be 93, uh, the 92, 93 budget? Sue, would you like to? Um, yes, I also have a question of Sue. Uh, a comment first, and I, in all my paperwork, I wanted to first congratulate the community services for this outstanding mailing piece that uh, went to people in town. And also, uh, in looking at the programs, I found uh, several very high-priced programs in comparison to the $15 and $20 fees that we're used to be charging. Um, could you give me an idea of approximately how much uh, or how close to your actual projections the enrollments were. And I am particularly interested in a projected revenue in budget of $2,500, uh, which actually uh, shows here is over 10000 on the Sunday River uh, trips. So I just, just in case it's a typo, which I'm sure it isn't. <laughs> um, you are correct. The, the ski programs are um, some of our most expensive programs and what we did was transfer our program this year or actually we in addition to the Shawnee Peak program we offered a Sunday River ski package for sixth through tenth grade students um, the cost of that varied from ninety nine dollars for the transportation and ski only to one hundred and forty four dollars which was transportation ski lessons and rentals <coughs> and this was for five trips to Sunday River um, that filled to capacity. We said we would take 90. Um, we ended up taking about 96. And we will um, be offering people transportation on standby um, to, to allow others to, to get in on the program if they wish to do so. On the other hand, the, the Shawnee Peak program, which was the, the big money ma um, maker and, and the, the major ski program last year, we um, altered to just be on, on half-day school workshops. And we did that based on 
feedback from parents, administrators, teachers, et cetera. Um, they found that students the day of were excited about going and the day after were exhausted having gotten back late at night. So what we did with that trip, we cut it from six trips to three trips, um, although the ski time is basically the same because we're departing on half-day workshops and um, instead of skiing from 5.30 to 7.30, we're basically skiing from 2 to 6. So we're getting just about the same amount of ski time, um, but we're not having those late night arrivals. And that program filled as well. Great. And the Valcom, there are three classes. We have three computer classes that we did in conjunction with Valcom, and those were $99 a piece, and all three of those filled the first semester as well. Thank you very much. Okay. I have one question on, on the success of those ski adventures. Has that allowed you to, to negotiate some favorable deals? Very much so. Um, if you're familiar what a, what a day lift ticket costs at Sunday River for an adult, which is $37, we actually are paying $15 to ski all day, and then we're charging the youngsters $5 for travel. So we have been able to negotiate some fairly good ticket prices. Thank you. The last report it has to do with enrollments for the current period. At the high school this uh, month, or January 1st, we had 404 students compared to 403 last month. At the middle school, we had 372 compared to 371. And the elementary school was down from 849 to 848. For a total enrollment of 1,624 students compared to 1,623 a month ago, compared to 1,574 students a year ago. The following uh, five or six pages outline the usage for uh, fuel oil, uh, transportation costs, and electri electricity costs for the six-month period ending in December. Any questions on those? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> The next item on the agenda is communications. Dr. Goldman? Uh, yes, I included in the board packet um, a letter that both Frank Miles and I had received from the Coalition for Essential Schools indicating that they are going to put together a uh, proposal to tap into the America 2000 uh, School of the Future, and that goes by various names, but that's essentially what it is. They were simply sending that letter out to the various districts that have some kind of connection, and you may recall we have a small grant, the UPS grant, that does connect us, uh, not formally, but informally, with the coalition. Uh, I see it as a wonderful opportunity, but I also see it as a very remote possibility that they would, uh, out of the entire United States, uh, pick us as one of four districts to work with, but I felt that you needed to know that we had uh, been contacted and that we had responded that we would certainly like to be considered because there would be some resources available to us through that kind of a study that would be significant. Uh, unless you have some questions, I can or comments. Okay. Madam Chairman, I have I need an explanation really of some communication from last month's meeting. And it had to do with the New England Association of Schools and Colleges and the letter about the extension of our uh, inspection. If the superintendent could explain what prompted that request. This was prompted by a request. Actually, it was handled through the high school. And the concern was that whatever decision is made to put a grade in the high school next year will require some uh, particular attention, some time, and some disruption to the regular schedule. Um, and so, uh, through discussion with the high school principal um, and the guidance people and so forth, we decided that if they would grant us um, an extension, we could then get on with whatever particular plans we have to have for next year. Uh, there is a tremendous time burden in the accreditation visit, and um, <coughs> frankly, we were not sure we could do justice to all our programs in the time that we had. There's also a cost factor, too. That's correct. Which helps our budget. Yes, it does. Right. That was not our first consideration, no, but it is a consideration. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'd like to recognize two pieces of correspondence that I received in the mail. Um, 
uh, other board members may have received it. Uh, one of the uh, writers is not able to be here tonight, and if her uh, issues are not addressed in uh, the agenda item, then I will uh, address them when we're looking at that issue. And the other writer is in the room. But I uh, do want to thank uh, people for putting in writing their concerns, and uh, I would receive mail anytime. Communication? All right. Next is superintendent's report. Common Core Community Dialogue Meetings. On um, January 3rd, the entire staff, uh, including myself, met uh, at the high school and Roger Rio, who had um, been kind enough to give us some time during our um, first series of community dialogues, came back and did speak to the uh, combined staff. We then followed a process similar to what we had used with the community where in small groups teachers filled out the easel sheets of knowledge, skills, and attitudes um, that would uh, form the basis for their vision. I have in fact completed a rough draft copy or summary of some of those themes and will be distributing it to you but I also wanted to mention it um, this evening just to remind people that the, those community dialogues are not something that we're done uh, and then you won't hear about them uh, again. Uh, as soon as we I do finish uh, uh, sort of test proofing my summary, I will get it out to both staff, to you, uh, and eventually back to the community. And we will look for an opportunity to get the staff vision, the community vision, um, out discussed, looking for areas of agreement, areas of possible conflict. All of this process, I think, is um, should be culminated with the board actually explicitly laying out your mission statement, just updating that process. Thank you. Any comments? Okay. School space study discussion. Um, do you have comments before we? Well, I think there are people here who, no doubt, hmm. would like to make comments. I just want to point out if anybody did not get this. Flyer. I have a number here, and it does perhaps address a few issues. Um, we did give this to every youngster uh, in school last week, K-8. However, I don't know how many of those things make it home. Um, I remember finding flyers in pants after they'd been washed, and it was a little hard to read them. So uh, if somebody did not get this, it does have some summary of the issues, and uh, I'll just put some out there and uh, people can help themselves. Okay. I think everyone's probably aware of the timeline that this week during our board meeting we'll hear input from the community. Um, on the 21st of January, we'll have a special meeting at 7.30 in the high school cafeteria where we will again hear input and the board will have a discussion and then we will vote um, as to whether the eighth grade or kindergarten will move to the high school next year. Um, we will also talk about uh, longer range options and where we're going with those. So please, if you're available that evening, come, come then as well. Okay, if you want to speak tonight, I'd appreciate it if you'd raise your hand and I'll, I'll start calling on people. Hmm, Jody? <coughs> Please, yes, please come to the microphone and, and say your name and... <coughs> My name is Jody Sadiloff. I have a kindergartner, a third grader, and um, a fifth grader. And since I don't have an incoming kindergartner or an incoming eighth grader, I feel like I can speak with a certain amount of lack of bias and a certain amount of objectivity. Um, I realize that it's unfortunate that that any group has to move, but the facts are clear that they do. And I think while it will be inconvenient and work a hardship on the teachers who ultimately have to make the move, I think that the ramifications of such a move have to be evaluated um, in terms of impact on the children. And I think it's really clear that that impact would be the greatest on eighth grade children. Um, eighth graders seem to me <coughs> particularly vulnerable and susceptible um, to, to older influences, easily pers uh, persuaded by peer pressure and in search of role models and so forth. I just think that 
I mean, if it were up to me, I wouldn't have the ninth grade as part of the high school. Um, I certainly would want to keep the eighth grade as much at a distance as possible. I just think that, that the dangers um, are too great to risk. On the other hand, looking at the kindergarten children, um, especially having a current kindergartner and spending a lot of time in the classroom, I see the kids, I see their interaction. Quite frankly, um, I think that if the facilities were such that the outdoor play area was adequate and that the classroom was made adequate, frankly, the kids could be in a laundromat for all the difference it would make to them. What matters to them the most is that they're in school, they're in <coughs> kindergarten, they're at an age, age five and six, of great adaptability. Um, and what is important to them is their interaction with other children, with the learning facilities in the classroom, and, and I think obviously most important of all, with their teacher. And so if they're met with teachers who are enthusiastic about this move and, and um, you know, content with where they are, I don't think there'll be any problem. I've heard some arguments from some parents that it will impede the transition to first grade. Um, I, I don't believe that the kindergartners really have a lot of contact with the first grade. They really are somewhat a separate unit. And again, while I, I appreciate that it would work a hardship on the teachers, um, I do think we have to look at the children. And, and my opinion would be that um, this course of moving the kindergartners would offer the least amount of impact, um, maybe a real minimal amount of impact in the long run. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I would appreciate it if, if there are a number of speakers, if people would try and limit themselves to no more than two minutes um, per person. Hi, my name is Patty Brassard. Um, I don't have a child that's going to be a kindergartner or an eighth grade. My kids are both in high school. One's a senior, one's a sophomore. But what I do have as a unique perspective is my daughter was a kindergartner at the high school the last time this happened. Um, I thought I would let you know that it was an extremely positive experience. Um, one of the things that is always a problem with kids in high school or with kids of any particular age group is that when you have kids that are close in age, that's when you have problems. Eighth graders with ninth and 10th, 11th and 12th graders obviously will be more of a problem than fifth grade, five year olds at the high school. If anything, what it ended up being was the high schoolers thought these kids were adorable. <laughs> they were spoiled rotten and if they came into contact at all. And that was very minimal contact. Uh, what they did allow was uh, part of the curriculum to be offered, it was they allowed uh, high schoolers to use it as a daycare or part of their um, IA requirement. And it worked out very well. One of the other aspects of that was that I think it was a very positive introduction to school. The kids uh, at five years old didn't get a chance to be picked on by their own age group of first and second graders who now have a younger kid to boss around. So uh, they, had, they got their feet wet in school, they got half day school, morning and afternoon, and then they got to be the big kids that moved up to the, to the uh, first grade up at the school. You know, my daughter thought that was wonderful. So I don't think it's, it's quite a, a nasty issue the way some people think it might end up being. It, it ended up being a very positive experience for my daughter. Thank you. Thank you. I have to read this, not being a public speaker. <laughs> the Middle School Parents Association met this morning. We discussed the possible move of the eighth grade to the high school. Except for one abstention, we all agreed that it would not be the, in the best interest of the students at that level. Though neither choice, K or 8, is ideal, we all realize the necessity of such a move. The kindergarten children are in school for two and a half hours and have no after school activities except possibly extended daycare already located in the high school. Eighth grade students spend a full day in school with a majority of the students staying after school at some time for academic or ac athletic activities. Kindergarten students would not be interacting with other grade levels as eighth grade students certainly would. 
Many school systems house kindergarten programs in separate facilities, but none that we know group grade 8 through 12. Most of the greatest concerns are social, emotional, and developmental, but according to our strong feelings about the needs of a middle school student, these concerns are directly related to the academic performance. Building self-confidence, independence, and strengthening study habits and communication skills are extremely important to academic success. This age group is already dealing with enough personal changes that they should not be faced with any more unknowns. The students as a group are uncomfortable with the idea of being put into a situation where they don't belong and feel they will not be accepted. Cross-graded learning experiences, sharing of faculty, and participation in sports activities with other mid middle school students will become complicated, if not at times impossible. Access to underutilized science labs should not be a positive consideration since the population increases in the high school, there may no longer be there may no longer be that space available. This issue is not a new idea, though the faces have changed, the same concerns are with us as were, there were in 1988 and 90. And the middle school parents realize the difficulties of moving any class, but strongly feel the negatives far outweigh any positive effects of moving the eighth grade to the high school. Thank you. Other speakers? Uh, my name is Liz Elliott. I have a kindergartner and I have a child who will be going to kindergarten in two years. I'm a little nervous. Um, I agree in terms of thinking about how I was as an eighth grader. Had I been exposed to high school students, that would have been a real, a very difficult thing for me, peer pressure, those other things. And I agree in terms of moving the kindergarten to the high school, but I have very, very strong feelings about uh, the association, or I should say, the distinct separation between the extended day program and the kindergarten program. I have, my daughter is in the extended day program, and it has um, its expectations, and the kindergarten program has its expectations. She clearly knows those differences. When she moves from one area to another, she knows what's expected of her. And I really want to emphasize that I feel that that difference right now marked by getting on a bus and going to another area is very important that that be maintained regardless of the fact that they may be in the same building. Thank you. My name is Joe Unnell. I live at uh, 47 Stony Brook Road. I have a question I think before I um, would like to make a comment. I, I guess it's obvious how the uh, kindergartners would be separated from the high schoolers, but um, maybe the superintendent could explain how the eighth graders, how their classes will relate to the high schoolers, and will, and will they indeed be exposed to, I guess everyone seems to be in fear of, to these older kids? Well, the, that is, of course, a, an issue. Um, we, I've spent quite a lot of time with parents of incoming kindergartners uh, who are not familiar with the high school building, uh, trying to show them the wing that we're talking about uh, for that purpose, should that be the decision. Um, and of course, we could, in fact, localize the home rooms for eighth grade um, in a somewhat similar fashion, although the choice would be a little different. What is certainly obvious is that you can't separate out um, the eighth grade because, in fact, the core facilities, that is the cafeteria, the gyms, the art, music facilities are all on the ground floor. So that although you can put aside some classroom space that would be uh, predominantly used for eighth grade, uh, they would in fact have to go throughout the building in order to have a full program. One of the issues that we have talked about and looked at um, is that those buildings that are conceived of as a 712 building, which is far more common than an 812 building, are usually uh, planned with a wing or some kind of architectural device that actually separates out. And in many cases, uh, some core facilities are repeated. That is, there'll be a gym and a set of locker rooms for the younger students and a uh, gym and a set of locker rooms for the older students, etc. Uh, obviously, uh, as we have looked at the possibility of using the space in the high school um, and looked at 
a, that it will certainly hold another grade um, and looked at which grade um, of the two, the separation is certainly going to be easier with the kindergartner than it would be with the eighth grade. This is not to say it's not going to cost money. And in fact, as far as providing appropriate space, kindergarten will certainly cost more because there are some modifications to the rooms that need to be made that would not have to be made in order to use them as eighth grade classrooms. Um, so there's a quid pro quo on all of those issues. Does, I could go on and on. No, but that's perhaps fine. I, it it just seemed that it was expressed that there was a concern uh, with eighth graders being exposed or, or having contact with the older, older children. Um, I personally don't find that that should be a problem. I, I think it would, doesn't speak very well to the older kids if, if there's such a concern that their influence on the eighth graders is going to be a bad one. Um, I think I, I have a kindergartner that will, I have a child that will start kindergarten next year. And I would far prefer to see him uh, go to Pond Cove. I think um, it's, uh, I think, a traumatic experience as it is to start school. But if you start them um, in kindergarten at one school, and then the very next year they're at another school again, starting over at, at another school, I think um, it would make them uncomfortable maybe twice. And um, if you start them out where they're going to be for uh, three or four or five years, um, where there's other younger kids around, and even they may not be exposed to the, to the first and second grade as much, but they're there and they see them. And I think that um, um, it would be much better to have the kindergartners start out um, and stay at uh, Pond Cove. I'm a little nervous up here too. I have to speak to kindergarten also because I will have a child going into kindergarten. I have a child in first grade now. And my question is similar to that gentleman. I'm concerned that they're in an environment where the counters, the windows, the washroom <coughs> facilities, etc., are at a scale that is developmentally and physically correct for these children. And I had hoped that when my child went to kindergarten, he would have the same experience as my other son in that he would be with children he recognized from the neighborhood, first and second graders. And I'm kind of concerned about how they'll follow through on the mentoring and the team teaching that for the past three years have been so encouraged in the Pond Cove situation. And um, I just say, as a parent of a child in Pond Cove and when going into Pond Cove, I would much prefer that they begin there and stay there than have this like graduation process between two environments. Thank you. May I ask for the speaker's name, please? Uh, what was your name, please? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Judy Lardner. Um, while I certainly do not like the idea of the kindergartners <coughs> moving from Pond Cove to the high school, and I will have a daughter in entering kindergarten next year, um, the <coughs> vibrations I've been getting for the last month or two is that the kindergartners will be moving to the high school. So I'd like to um, make my remarks based on that. Um, I did tour the facilities with the superintendent and Sue Weatherby last month, and while I found the classrooms quite pleasant, I think they would probably work wonderful for the kindergartners. My overriding concern is the bathroom situation there. Um, what I understand is that there is a proposal to use the existing boys and girls bathroom on that third floor in a sort of timeshare situation where high school students would use it between classes, daycare students would use it, and kindergarten students would use it. And assuming the best that there would be no conflict between the high school students and the kindergarten students in the facilities, and I you know, I'll admit as a high school student I was in the bathrooms when I shouldn't have been. Um, just the thought of especially little girls who would have the longer walk from the kindergarten wing through the lobby around the corner into their restroom, which I understand is an unsupervised trip. I feel extremely uncomfortable with that. Um, my daughter is very brave and I think she'd do it. I think she'd walk through a bunch of teenagers. I know a lot of other children who would have a very tough time doing that. Um, I hate to think badly about anybody too, but I do not like the idea of, of our children having to run a gamut, as it were, past the counseling center, past, I think, the health center, through the, the lobby, past the administration, and around the corner. 
I would urge the board to consider at a very minimum a separate bathroom facility for the kindergartners in that wing. Um, I'm, I may be incorrect. I think there were five classrooms in that wing and the proposal is four would be needed. If that's true, perhaps a bathroom could be put in the fifth. That classroom could be used in, in some other way too that perhaps there might be um, an adult supervisor in that room so when a child is sent to the bathroom there's somebody expecting them there. I, I think the ideal would be uh, a toilet and a sink in every room. That's the way I was raised. I know right now, given budgetary constraints and the fact that you don't want to keep these kids there, that may not work. But I would certainly urge the, the separate bathroom as a minimum. With respect to the playground, um, I'm, I'm not an elitist. I don't think these children need the wonderful wood structures that they have. But it seems to me the equipment, although quite sound there, is not enough if the kindergarten classes all are using that at the same time. There's a very limited amount of equipment. And the fact that the playground is unfenced has me um, quite concerned. That road is used a lot during the day by any number of people. I used it a lot during the, the school hours for swimming <coughs> classes. And it would concern me that the children would be a very short run from the road. I think ideally a minimum, a cheap of any sort could be thrown around, leaving a large play area. I think just giving the enclosure to the children would um, spur creativity where you could perhaps get away with a little less um, equipment. You know, you can run to the fence and back, and then perhaps we could get some parental involvement and throw up a bigger sandbox or some sort of play structure. Um, I have two questions also about the facilities is I know there are double bus runs, and I wondered where the children will wait if they're on the early bus run coming into school or on the later bus leaving. And the other question would be, um, I don't really know what the children do now, but in the case when the children cannot use the um, outdoor facilities for whatever physical education, where they would go if they're in the high school. And um, I guess in closing, I'd like to say we've heard a lot of cons to the eighth graders moving, and I will buy those. And we've also heard benefits to the eighth graders moving. And I haven't really heard any convincing benefits for my child and probably my other daughter going there, too. So if I can't be assured of benefits, if you could please try to minimize any of the detriments to this move, because it is a crucial year. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Yes, <laughs> partly um, because of some of the discussions we've already had with parents and with staff, I should update um, the group in general and also um, uh, Judy uh, who did come in and tour the uh, facilities. We have in fact yesterday spent some time with the architect in there because I um, whatever decision is made I need to have dollars attached to it. I have said uh, publicly in public meetings whatever decision the board makes is going to cost money. The money that it's going to take to do if the kindergarten moves um, I think it's important for the community both to be assured that we do not recommend putting anybody any place where we cannot have a decent program. I think that's important. Uh, and there are some money costs tied to the eighth grade move too, although they're not quite as obvious. They would be coming up in various kinds of staffing issues. Uh, we have looked at that wing. There are, in fact, six rooms. Uh, we have talked with the high school. Uh, it does seem to be the clearest and best um, way to deal with this is to make that entirely kindergarten room so there would be no other use of that wing but that. Um, the issue of putting uh, toilet facilities in each room is difficult because the rooms are fairly spacious but they are a little smaller than the current kindergarten rooms and putting a toilet in each room does chew up a lot of space. It also of course adds considerably to the expense. But we saw what uh, the architect felt was a pretty good possibility of doing exactly what you're suggesting, which is uh, putting another bathroom facility in that wing. Because bathroom has use has surfaced as a very legitimate concern on the part of both staff and parents. And um, we think that, uh, we, I don't know, I can't tell you right now and probably won't have any figures until, in fact, we have to figure it out if that's the way we go. Uh, but I would assume that it's a fairly reasonable cost and that, again, it is part of the, our obligation and desire to have an educationally appropriate space. Um, we also, of course, are very aware of the fencing and the playground equipment. And I did, we just want to point out that we have had meetings among the staff, um, both at, at the eighth grade level and at the kindergarten level. The board has met at the invitation of staff members to discuss some of these things. Um, all of us have been in contact with parents. 
Um, and I know in some cases I've had two or three tours, and I know that Sue Weatherby has also made herself available. Um, it's important for all of you to understand that although this is not the best of all possible worlds, there are solutions that will at least make whatever way we go um, educationally sound. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Deegan. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is John Deegan. I am the father of two children at Cape Schools, a seventh grader and an eleventh grader. I am also an educator. I am vice president for academic affairs and provost at the University of Southern Maine. Being an educator, I am uh, sensitive to and cautious about expressing my opinion on uh, matters for which I have uh, no responsibility. And so I speak before you tonight with a certain amount of uneasiness and even advocating a uh, uh, position on this matter. But as an academic administrator, I recognize that all too often insufficient or inadequate space and a seemingly almost <coughs> always too small budget to accomplish desired and valuable educational objectives exists. And I recognize the nature of the problem that you face because I too face that in the position that I occupy. I also recognize the need to balance competing needs and demands and that solutions are often compromises that are forged to maximize benefits and to minimize harm. As an educator and as a parent, I support finding a solution that minimizes compromising the quality of the educational programs at all CAPE schools. I know, for example, that several high school students are very much concerned about encroachment for whatever solution is uh, selected of their space. But I have given careful consideration to the various options that have been proposed. And it is my judgment, first of all as a parent, but also professional judgment, that the least harmful move would be to relocate the kindergarten students to the high school. However, I would encourage the board to work diligently to assure that all affected students, uh, that for all affected students, the quality of the CAPE educational experience is not compromised by whatever move it is that you choose. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Debbie Peck and I feel more comfortable speaking now because I too come to you uh, with two roles, one as a parent and one as an educator. I have a daughter who's presently in kindergarten and I have an infant at home. So I won't be impacted for quite a while, whichever way you decide to go with this. I have had an opportunity to speak at length with Peter Leslie and with the superintendent and I appreciate the time that they were willing to give to me to talk about this issue. I must say that having been a primary K-2 principal for the last 10 years in another school district in this area, I obviously have some real concerns about moving the kindergarten to the high school. We made a major move in the district that I work in about 10 years ago when we took the kindergartens who had been isolated up until that time and moved them back into the regular elementary schools. That was done very purposely because there had been real concerns about isolating those children during a very critical year. It's the first year of school for those children. They're going to have 19 years in school. And I think if there's one word or two words that I came up with that were the most important to me, one is transition and one is integration. It's very easy to look at these children and say, well, they're just kindergarten and it is their first year so they don't know anything else yet. But having a kindergartner in school this year who has been in daycare since she was three months old and thinking that she was very adaptable and had made transitions very easily, I found out that transition really is a big word and I now have a lot more understanding for those children, those 130 children that I have coming into my building every year, just how hard a move that is. I think that tr kindergarten teachers and the whole staff in a school do a tremendous amount for seeing that children have a successful year that first year. And I guess some of my concerns have to do with the fact that that's the year that they get to know what school is all about. That's the year that they learn to play with big kids on the playground. That's the year that they ride the bus with big children. They've never had to do those kinds of things before. And when I look at the staff and I think about the amount of time that they put into that, 
and the amount of time they put into integrating their curriculum and, and getting children into all the beginnings of pre-reading and pre-math and how critical that is to the success of children in their education. It's really important that those teachers have the opportunity to communicate regularly with other teachers, first grade teachers, second grade teachers, and, and as, as much as we'd like to think that we, we can set up all kinds of communications and dialogues, it's very hard to do that when people are in two different physical plants. I really hope that, um, that, that I, I, as, as, as the gentleman before me, I had real concerns about speaking, and, and I must say the superintendent really encouraged me to come to this meeting and, <laughs> and be involved as a parent, and I do that, do that foremost as a parent, but I guess I also feel that um, it's important to, 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 to use some of my past experience because that is really valuable to me as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other speakers? Hi, my name is Diane Greswick. I'm a parent of two girls. One is in uh, first grade and one is going to be incoming into kindergarten. Um, my husband and I have uh, pretty serious concerns about the move to kindergarten to the high school, primarily because of the separation issues from the other children, um, which we don't feel are right, and I think those have been already elaborated on uh, before me. The other issue is their adjustment to first grade. Um, my daughter, who is in the first grade now, had quite a time adjusting to the long day and new teacher and uh, new, new children uh, in her group. And I anticipate that if they will have to adjust to a new physical surrounding as well um, and unfamiliar faces, that will be a problem. Um, I guess that's just basically it. And I'll give you all a letter summarizing that afterwards. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments? Thank you very much. Uh, we have recorded uh, the comments and the questions, and certainly at our meeting on the 21st, we'll have a chance to get those answered and have our own questions answered. Um, are there any board members that would like to comment at this time? OK, thank you. Uh, item C, School Board Town Council Workshop Meeting Report. And I'm going to <coughs> sort of put together C and D. They really, I think, essentially one, one uh, item. I should thank people for coming. Yes, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Are you all leaving? <laughs> <laughs> all these fascinating things on the rest of the agenda. <laughs> Don't go. We're going to talk about the budget. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chairman, may I make a comment? I believe that there are people that are not in this room who might have thought that this discussion was going to go longer, so there may be people coming in later who might want to address it, if it could be. Just as in summary, uh, obviously we were all there at the um, school board town council workshop and um, it was again reported in the newspaper and I think that we are all quite aware of the general outline of um, the budget situation. We've already made mention this evening about the finalizing of the uh, state legislature um, deciding which cut to make and it is in line with what we were talking about at last month's meeting. It does certainly uh, carry the implications for us that the rest of the school year budget has to be um, monitored carefully and we certainly hope that uh, they're talking about colder uh, weather over the weekend. Let's hope it's not, you know, the whole month of February. Uh, frankly, a lot of tight budgets uh, are made or broken by the oil bill. Uh, when you see the amount of the oil we burn, that's why. I won't comment on that except to simply note for public record that we did have that council uh, board workshop. Perhaps somebody else wants to make a comment on it, but if not, I'll move on to the budget issues. I just distributed a sheet of tentative uh, meetings. Um, the, I would uh, anticipate, I'm in the process right now of 
collecting the budgets from the building principals, department heads. Um, that process, I find, is uh, time consuming because we talk about a lot of staffing issues, we talk about a lot of uh, curriculum planning issues, um, and then once I put the budget together, uh, we have several reviews with the administrative staff. In many cases, they go back to their s building staff um, discussing some possible impacts of what's going on. So we will be prepared to present a budget to you uh, with our recommendations uh, on February 25th. That is the fourth Tuesday of February would normally be a board workshop evening. Uh, I am suggesting then and would appreciate it if you could give us some feedback, not doesn't necessarily have to be tonight, but as soon as possible so that we know whether these dates will work for you. If this goes well and we are able to cover the material we need to cover, you should have as a target adopting your budget, uh, proposed budget, uh, up at your regular March board meeting. Uh, then we're scheduled to have a meeting with the town council on March 26th and a second meeting on April 2nd with the public hearing and budget adoption, I believe, targeted for May 11th. Um, so if you want to check your calendars or your schedules and let me know if this is going to work. Yeah. Yes, I just had a question. Um, in the past, uh, we have both televised and not televised the budget workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, do we know at this point if they will be televised? Well, certainly it's a good idea. I don't know. Uh, we are not able to fit all of these meetings, as uh, you can see, into the council chambers. They can, of course, be taped and then shown at a later date, which I would certainly recommend. I think it's very good to get those discussions out into the community. Um, there is a small, modest charge, of course, involved, and, and again, I'm not promising anything until I look into the budget situation, but I would think that would be possible. Thank you. Okay. Shall we move on? Unless there's anything else. Okay. okay. Uh, report on the co completion of the exceptionality course. Uh, yes, and I'm looking for my sheet here. A list of names I want to make sure I get right. Uh, first of all, I, I was a student in this course, and so I had a first-hand um, uh, opportunity to find out how good it was. The certification laws now require all staff, including uh, superintendents, to take a course no, called exceptionality. This is intended to make sure that all of us are aware of the broad range of development of not only some of the legal issues, but more importantly, probably the whole range of teaching needs for children of special needs. Um, I'm going to summarize some material that I have here so that you and the audience at large can understand what a real team effort this was. This was a course that was put together by our own staff, delivered by our staff, and uh, planned. Um, and I think uh, it, was an, or <laughs> it was an exceptionally good course. So uh, there were 25 teachers and administrators completed the course, which ran from October 10th through January 9th, meeting weekly on Thursday afternoons from 3.30 to 6. It was designed and, improved and approved by the State Department to meet certification requirements for a course in mainstreaming exceptional students. The course was developed by members of our special education staff who met regularly throughout the 1990-91 school year and into the summer in the planning stages. Those who worked on the planning and development with Wayne Dorr and Mary Bruns were Pam Vos, Janet Favor, Betty Mullen, Peg Lewis, Susie Safer, Beth Sandmeyer, Carolyn Russ, Sue Mackay, and Sandy Burley and thanks to all of them. The course was also delivered by our local staff. Uh, joining the planners listed above in the delivery were Jill Bell, Shirley Willis, Darlene Ayers, Mandy Garmey, and Julie Salikas. Again, thanks to all of you. Um, it's noted here that the system offered a course during the 89-90 school year which met the same state requirement but was developed and delivered mainly with people outside the system and cost uh, about $3,000. Our staff who developed and delivered this course did so at practically no extra cost to the system. Uh, we did pay uh, a small per diem for teachers who worked for one day on planning in the summer. But most of the planning and all of the uh, teaching for this course uh, were done by our staff at no cost to the system. And I certainly want to thank them, applaud them, and I have to say that my own awareness of what's going on in the system in that whole general area 
has been sharpened, and I am very impressed with the uh, range of knowledge and skill that I saw in that course. Now I just have to finish my practicum so I get credit for it. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Next, school board subcommittees and reports. First is the finance subcommittee report, Peter Leslie. Thank you. I'm tempted to repeat the uh, presentation I made uh, the other night uh, at the joint uh, school board town council uh, meeting, but I, I don't think I will. The reason I'm tempted to repeat it is that I used slides and didn't hand out uh, the projections that we'd made. And the slides, I happen to see the tape, are not particularly easy to read or follow. So anybody who is interested in uh, looking at these very preliminary, very preliminary projections uh, could get them from the business manager. Uh, basically, there were three uh, slides that we looked at. One showed what our budget would look like if we increased our spending by about 3%, uh, moved either the kindergarten or the eighth grade to the high school, and added nothing to the budget for the additional 60 or so students we expect next year. And uh, one of the heroic assumptions we made was that the uh, state revenues would stay about the same as they are this year, uh, the reduced amount this year. And we make that assumption because the present formula is working and should continue to work in favor of the southern communities such as ours. Uh, however, that remains to be seen and that number is a very soft one. But if all those numbers were to fall into place, the tax rate would increase by almost 9%. That's the school component. If on the other hand, we didn't increase our spending at all, we would, uh, and the objective were to get the increase in the tax rate below 1%, we would have to cut out $300,000 from our present spending. And again, that's without any adjustment for the additional 60 or so students that we expect. So that really defines the parameters of the problem, and it's a significant problem. The uh, third slide that we put up was a summary of the six options that we're considering uh, in the long run to deal with the problem of our buildings and uh, those numbers are broken down by the buildings and any of you who are interested in seeing what the range of costs are and how the grades would be uh, structured uh, that information is also available uh, finally I just uh, comment on the fact that uh, we have uh, initiated negotiations with some of the bargaining units yesterday uh, the teachers and the uh, administrators and so that will be a key part of our, uh, our budget work uh, in the coming months. Now, unless other members of the committee have comments, uh, that uh, concludes our report. Thank you. Any comments? Okay. The next is the Joint Study Committee, which I will report on. And this is the committee uh, that deals with the restructuring of the career ladder. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we've been working hard on streamlining the uh, career ladder document, the evaluation, so that um, it's tighter and maintains uh, the best of what the career ladder offered um, while simplifying the evaluation procedures so administrators don't have to spend uh, as many hours on evaluations. It also attempts to really define um, what this school system is about, its philosophy and, um, and its goals and, um, and, and head us in that direction as well as defining what a good solid uh, level three teacher is in this system which is uh, uh, the level of competency that we expect for our teachers. Uh, we'll be presenting a report uh, in February um, on, our, on our results. The town center. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, because of the winter holidays, <coughs> there was no meeting the end of December, and the next meeting of the town center committee is scheduled for the 29th of January in the town hall. Okay, community team. Uh, yes, Madam Chairman, I'll limit my comments because of uh, the item uh, 8B8, uh, but I would like to say that the next meeting of the community team is tomorrow night in room 205 of the high school. It begins at 7 and ends approximately 9 o'clock, and the general public is invited to attend. Okay. 
thank you. <clears throat> Unfinished business. Uh, our policies, second reading. Uh, board member, conflict of interest, nepotism, school board meetings, executive sessions, policy adoption and amendment, administration in policy absence, and new board member orientation. Um, why don't we go down one by one. Any um, changes, any further discussion with board member conflict of interest? Okay, nepotism. Uh, yes, Madam Chairman, uh, to the Chairman of the Policy Subcommittee. Um, I would like a question answered about paragraph two. Uh, at the end of that, um, would it be appropriate to consider uh, except uh, spouse, uh, except uh, employed in the school unit as of the date of the policy adoption will be excluded from this policy as in paragraph one <clears throat> or is that covered by uh, paragraph four To me, that's covered by paragraph four, but so, unless anybody I also had different. question that because we had discussed mm -hmm. it at the last meeting, but reading paragraph four, I felt that covered it, and we, we wouldn't have to give it a, uh, a blanket policy mm -hmm. for those still in, in the system at the time of passage. Thank you. Okay, school board meetings, mm -hmm. executive sessions. Policy adoption and amendment. Administration in policy absence. And new board member orientation. Chairman. Madam Chairman, on <coughs> the copy that we received, there were some words deleted. And um, the, one, the first one in paragraph A was something that we had addressed. Mm -hmm. The second one, it it deletes um, first and board chair and leaves it <coughs> blank. Yeah. And as I remember, you had a question about whether that should remain superintendent, as was the previous practice. And mm -hmm. we were going to discuss it as a committee because of the holiday. We did not actually meet. But I have talked with the other committee members, and they are comfortable with leaving it according to prior practice as superintendent. Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. I have one other concern. Since we, since this is also a budget or a expense which is related to the budget, and we now do have a finance committee, I wondered if, if you wanted board input into approval, if maybe that could be a function of the, the, of the finance subcommittee and the superintendent. That's just an option. Any thoughts about that? Hmm. Or to leave it as superintendent. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts about that? About okay. <laughs> well, I would leave it superintendent. I, I, I agree. I would leave it as superintendent. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking it's nice to have somebody else make that. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> actually, I was just thinking that uh, one of the things as we get rolling and after we get a little beyond the budget um, sort of crunch time. Um, it is nice to have, I, I, as a superintendent, I appreciate having a finance subcommittee that meets with um, some predictable regularity so that a lot of little odds and ends can be discussed that way or things that I know may be coming up and this, of course, can be one of them. I certainly do feel that the, it's a proper use of that kind of subcommittee to ask for advice and or just plain let you know that these issues are coming along so that I'm not um, making, uh, it's not so much that I'm not, I'm not uh, unwilling to make a decision, but I would like to have you know what what my thinking is. All right, so are we ready to vote on these policies? It's the second reading. Do I hear a motion to approve the policies? So moved. Second? Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Thank you. OK, 
Okay, update on community team request re regarding use of the school parking lot. Um, <coughs> yes. Uh, regretfully, I have to tell you that as a follow-up to our meeting uh, last month, um, you may recall that I was asked to contact board council and we also asked the business manager to uh, discuss this whole issue with our insurance carrier. Um, and I did include in your packet a letter which we received um, during the past week from our insurance carrier after a couple of phone calls back and forth between myself and our, our uh, board attorney, uh, myself and, and Chief Pickering. Um, it seems that it is the advice that we're being given that it would be um, somewhat risky for the school board to even give the appearance of being able to take personal responsibility for monitoring those kinds of meetings. Um, and I have discussed that, as I said, with um, uh, Captain Williams. I, I know that I've asked the high school administration to discuss it with other members of the community team. I've talked to the uh, police chief, and we're all in agreement that the uh, idea is one with certainly the best interest of the kids at heart. We, you obviously had wanted to support that, but you very appropriately, I think, asked for us to look into liability issues, and we don't control those. Our carrier uh, has explained, at least uh, from their point of view, what are the issues that we need to be concerned about. Um, the fact that we do not um, actually are in the position where we cannot officially support uh, as an activity or even as a condoned um, activity, not necessarily one that we take responsibility for, uh, may be unfortunate, but I think that is the advice I have to give you. Discussion by the board? <clears throat> Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. then do we need to take another vote to rescind do. our? Yes, you do. Okay. Oh, you were the, did you want to? Uh, I had a comment. Yes. I, I, yeah, it is unfortunate that the realities of liability and other issues preclude us from offering that service. And I think the concept had had tremendous merit by the community team. Um, I would encourage them to continue to try to formulate creative responses to that need. And one uh, possibility, again, would be the opportunity to use the middle school gym for a routine open type of um, athletic environment, either volleyball or basketball, uh, which could be of service to high school uh, kids routinely on a weekend basis. Okay. Other comments? Well, I would just uh, second what, uh, what Mark said. I, I find myself quite dissatisfied with this outcome. and it, seems to be yet another instance in our society where liability uh, is the big issue and uh, somebody's always got to be responsible for any conceivable thing that goes wrong. Uh, and I, I find that quite frustrating. Uh, I think that uh, everything that I've read about uh, you know, today's youth is that they n do need a place to come and be and the fact that we can't easily use our public property to achieve that uh, is very disappointing. And so I uh, would just like to see us uh, try harder and uh, look for other solutions uh, because I think we must. I, I would like to make a comment uh, before I make my motion and that is I agree with the comments that have been stated already. Uh, having made the motion and serving as a community team member and supporting this action, um, I will say that it's very frustrating for me after seeing the hours of work uh, both with the uh, municipal officials and the community team uh, that uh, this is overruled because of potential liability. Uh, and I would like to move, Madam Chair, that uh, we uh, vote to rescind the prior conditional approval, I mean, the, excuse me, the approval of conditional use of the high school parking lot uh, as a uh, student uh, meeting place uh, and I would like to also add in that motion that it is due to uh, fear of uh, liability exposure no other reason. Second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. New business. Uh, personnel request consideration of retirement. Uh, yes, and that is, uh, I have a letter from Hope Brown, uh, who has 
is just about completing 31 years of full-time teaching. I think that's a, a noble record um, and is notifying us that um, we are basically, uh, she is planning on retiring and uh, as you know, our contract calls for that notice to be given um, in a timely fashion, which is what she is doing. I've gotten to know Hope in the year that I've been here, um, certainly recognized an outstanding teacher. She will be missed um, and I hope that she enjoys her last semester of teaching with us. Yes, I do too. Um, do I hear a motion to accept uh, the request for retirement? I move to accept the request for retirement of Hope Brown. Second. Further discussion? A comment I would just like to wish her well and also share that the Middle School Parents Association sends those same regards at the meeting this morning that was held. Okay. I have one short comment. I didn't know Hope Brown was going to retire and uh, I've only been in a few meetings with her, but I'm surprised she's going to retire because in the meetings that, which I attended, she exuded a youthful enthusiasm for what she was about and what we were about that, that really impressed me. So I'm very sorry she is retiring. Okay. Having had two children who have, who have been in her classes their last two years, which, appear, which now appear to be her last two years, and who have had positive experiences in, in language arts, she will sadly be missed. All in favor? Okay, thank you. Request for proceeding with middle school indoor track. Uh, yes, and our middle school uh, representative mentioned um, going to the council, student council, middle school student council look for funding. I guess that is signs of the times. Um, <laughs> for those of you who may think that's a strange uh, route, the student council, particularly at the middle school level, has been an active uh, group. If any of you have been collared for um, magazines or something, I think you realize that they're uh, a real potent force for raising money. Um, and they do have some funds that they have uh, uh, tried from time to time to help out one, pro uh, one uh, project or another or sometimes buy things for the school. Uh, I did include in your packet a memo from Nancy Hutton which I think gives you a fairly complete rundown of what this, cre this request is all about, including the reason why you're getting it at what is obviously an untimely fashion, but that there are some good reasons for that, and Nancy's memo um, lists that. We also are aware, and I think her memo makes that clear, that the, uh, this is a time of year for students this age where there is sort of a downtime, and that indoor track uh, it certainly has proved to be popular with other middle school students throughout the area. There is a league and so on and so forth. So I think if you have questions, Nancy is here, obviously, to answer them. Uh, plus, I think the uh, memo gives you a lot of information on this. Andy Strav is here also. Oh, I didn't see him. Yep. There he is. I am. Okay. Uh, Nancy, uh, next year when nothing's free and nobody's volunteering and... <laughs> <laughs> well, what is right. this going to cost the school system? Uh, we did put it in our budget for next year for the cost of coaching at approximately a thousand dollars and the cost for um, renting the expo which is where the events take place and the transportation have been figured into our athletic budget and they would be similar to what the requests are this year. Um, I think that's the way Andy submitted that particular budget. Is that right Andy? Yes. So approximately next year, if we ran it for our 6th, 7th, and 8th grades, which is what the Student Council voted to fund today, if we can get in on the 6th grade schedule, which Andy is checking for us, um, then it would be approximately about a $1,700 sport to, to fund. $1,000? For approximately $1,000 for coaching. And the renting of the... And the other materials this year cost us about $635. For the, that's the expo, the officials, um, and transportation. I just, yes. uh, that's Cape Elizabeth's share. That, that, of those that is Cape Elizabeth's that, share, right. We split the expo cost. It is an expensive sport because we have to rent the expo building instead of running it at someone's school. So that's an expense that some of our other events do not carry with it, that indoor track does. Other comments? 
I do have one. I, I just think it's funny when we think of community involvement and volunteerism that we have teachers volunteering to coach and we have students volunteering to pay. And I think that that speaks well to uh, how important this is to the middle school students and I strongly support it. In light of, of, uh, of uh, Mrs. Pond's concern about next year's budgeting, I mean, we may, and the fact that the middle school um, student council voted to fund this, we may be looking at possibly participation fees to help offset what might be budget cuts. So these might be things we might be have to be thinking about. And it seems that the community is willing to come forward and do that, either through volunteerism or, or uh, providing some kind of a fee. Other comments? Okay. So we take a vote, please. Um, do I hear a motion to uh, proceed with our middle school having an indoor track program? Okay, second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. Appointment to the Advisory Committee of Community Services. Yes, uh, I would like to nominate June Tory, uh, who is describes herself as a um, <coughs> senior citizen who has ideas concerning that age group and as a grandparent concerns and ideas for after school and summer programs. Um, as a grandparent of a child who's had the advantage of an extended daycare and summer camp, I cannot praise the committee enough. And uh, she has indicated her willingness to serve on the advisory committee and we nominate her for appointment. Okay, thank you. Um, do I hear a motion to accept June Tory as the appointment to the advisory committee of community services? So moved. Second. Further discussion? I have a question, Madam Chairman. How long a term are we nominating her for? Three years. Three years. Three years. Thank you. And I have one other comment. It is good to see someone from the senior, from that senior citizen element, which is a growing element of our population, getting more involved in, in the schools, in community services, and those kind of functions. Okay. Because I think they bring a, a certain perspective, and, and I think that helps. I just want to also say, I, I spoke to the senior citizen group uh, last week, um, and that which was a real pleasure. It gave me an opportunity to sit down and talk with uh, people. I also, of course, was there to tell them that we had a problem with our buildings, but I told them I wasn't really there with my hand out at the particular moment. I wanted them to understand, however, what the issues were. Uh, but in addition, we got into a number of other uh, formal and informal discussions. I also want to compliment our own um, hot lunch or cafeteria crew at the high school. Uh, they fix a lunch there, which they sell for a modest price, really. Uh, it was delicious. I mean, anytime anybody uh, is really looking for a really good lunch, at senior citizen lunch once a month is uh, not only a bargain, it is very good. Do you have to qualify? <laughs> well, uh, I was there. <laughs> I was sort of minimally qualifying. I can, but uh, anyway, um, I, I don't, I'm not sure, but I know community services could clarify that for us. Okay. Other comments, Anne? I, I just wanted to say that I know June from, she's, I, I believe she still is a, a teacher at Maiden Cove um, Nursery School. And yes. um, when my daughter was there, she was just wonderful. The kids loved her. She has a lot of energy and a lot of perspective. Um, I think she'll be a great addition to the committee. Good. All in favor? Okay. Madam Chairman, may I ask a question? Mm -hmm. uh, who is she replacing? Who is she replacing? Thank you. Request from the superintendent to dispose of unused trusses. Yes, this is sort of a sore point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the um, famous trusses. They, uh, for those of you who, who spend any time at all outside the middle school building, 
Uh, we started uh, the fall last year with them covered and over a period of time that covering has deteriorated and the trust is I'm sure are deteriorating also. Um, I put this item on the agenda because a citizen came forward with a proposal basically to use, uh, use them um, <coughs> for some uh, little league uh, purposes that is to cut the trusses up and use, use them as lumber. Uh, since I have put this on the agenda and there has been public notice that the issue would be discussed, I have been contacted, or D has been contacted by one or two other people who are also interested. We thought we had already made, made it public that we were trying <coughs> to either sell these or find some uh, appropriate use for them. So I'm unprepared to continue with this um, discussion and I will contact the gentleman who came to see me to let him know that since other uh, people have come forward, I will need to investigate that and get a process that is a fair and equitable process. Obviously, anybody that's interested needs to, uh, if, if there's anybody else out there uh, who has a proposed use. We have tried through our structural engineers to find um, a possible market. Uh, at this point, they would have to be checked for structural integrity if anybody wanted to use them as a truss. I understand there's a process that you can use for that. The other possibility is that we can um, donate them to or make some arrangement, obviously, with people who would have uh, use for them as, as lumber. I would just like to make one comment on that. If somebody uh, were to come up and offer, for example, $200 and take them away, and the alternative uh, w was the proposal we have in front of us. I would prefer the proposal because then uh, that lumber, which is worth far more than that, mm -hmm. uh, at least would be going to improve our amenities uh, and support our uh, sports programs here in the community rather than having them trucked out of town. So I think we ought to look very carefully and not simply make the, the decision on the dollars. Okay. I certainly at this point uh, just want to give public notice that we are beginning to get some proposals for the use of these trusses uh, and that if anybody else has any interest, I hope that we, I'm not exactly sure what the most effective way of advertising this is. Um, I had asked uh, earlier for us to uh, give out notice through the sort of network of contractors in various ways, but, uh, and I know Gary Spencer's been trying on again, off again for months to find a, uh, an interested priority. We're going, we will, it appears we will be able to make a decision. Um, I would like to put a timeline on this and to let everybody that's interested know that a decision certainly we made within the month. Well, uh, let me just comment that uh, I think that uh, it uh, was common knowledge uh, some time ago that we took a roof off the building mm. and that anybody that was interested in those trusses would have long since appeared. Uh, and we did make a lot of bona fide efforts to put the word out. Uh, I think that one of the things we ought to do is to get them off our campus. And if we have a reasonable proposal uh, before too much time goes by to use them in some of the other things we do in this community, I think we ought to move on it. Ian? Loretta had her hand up first. <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did we ever run a classified? I'd have to ask Gary at this point to review uh, what steps he's taken over the past year. Uh, yeah. At one point we tried different things. I can do that. We have, we simply, we have, we've had a couple of nibbles of, uh, from contractors who thought they might suit, but you have to have a certain kind of project, obviously. Yeah. If these are going to be dismantled and not used for their previously intended purpose, does the school department have no use for them as lumber? Um, no. None that's been identified for me except for the possible use uh, in our shop programs and um, that again is um, something that people, as you say, Peter, people have known that they were there. I think we, what, what what I'm saying is that there appears to be more interest in this now that we've actually I've put it on the agenda and people know that it's a decision we want to make. I do recommend we do something about them because I'm concerned about the attractive nuisance. Talk about liability. Uh, kids do play around them. There is some, I understand some kids are using bicycles over them. I don't think that's a safe routine. I can see all kinds of things and I, I'm thinking about the liability for swimming pools, you know, that you become 
somewhat concerned when you know you have something out there. So I do want to see a resolution to this, and I will uh, continue with. Uh, yes, I do want to express my concern about us <coughs> not taking action on this tonight, and I, I do want the people at home and also other members of the board to know uh, my view on this. On or about October 26, Jerry Jackson approached me during the Cape Elizabeth Lewiston soccer game uh, about uh, his willingness to uh, remove this obstruction from our middle school area. Um, I sent him to the business manager at that time. Uh, Jerry Jackson has done a tremendous, uh, excuse me, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned his name, but the writer, the requester, uh, has done a tremendous amount of public service work for the town, and I, the proposal before us is to use uh, this for town uses, and that is uh, the Little League and the Lions Field, and these are both programs that are paid for out of the municipal budget. Um, I am very concerned that after 15 months, uh, we, or give or take, we have uh, a place uh, to dispose of these, and I'm concerned about the liability issue, and uh, I just wanted to put a little bit of uh, time that uh, this person has put into getting this to the school board agenda. I'd like and to second that, actually. Jerry Jackson has not spoken to me about this, but I do know him. I've seen him in action. He's a great volunteer. He loves baseball. He loves the kids. He loves sports, and uh, I think we ought to be thinking of that when we make this decision. I kind of concur with both Peter and Rosemary. If, if it's a minimal amount of money exchange and we're not going to be um, very ably reimbursed for them, I would support their use being utilized for town purposes and, and town's uh, activities. Okay. Other comments? Is it your recommendation then that we, we table this for a short while? Well, actually, um, I just found out almost minutes before the board meeting that, there, that the business manager had received some other inquiries, so I haven't had a chance to really review that, and I would appreciate that. Even though I agree I had a conversation uh, with uh, Mr. Jackson, certainly felt that he was giving us a very uh, attractive um, opportunity to solve a couple of problems here and help kids, as, as you've already pointed out. But I do think that uh, my best judgment is that I do not know what the state of some of these other proposals may be. Uh, this sometimes happens, of course, when an item is on the agenda. Uh, it calls, then that's why it's there. It calls public attention to the issue. And I had discussed with Mr. Jackson that I felt that was a way to do it. Those trusts are, have a life of their own. And I thought we, they should go out in a blaze of glory, but not, not literally. <laughs> OK. Okay, then we will table that <clears throat> for the moment. So what are we going to do with it? Uh, <coughs> how quickly are we going to try to resolve this? I will discuss with Dee what it is exactly that is going on, answer the question about classified, try to you know, really, uh, um, I can certainly do that with, I can get the information obviously by tomorrow. Now, you've given an indication as a board I would say some direction to me and to the business manager that you would, uh, if the amount of money we're talking about is minimal, it sounds as if you would really approve of use for some school and or town related use. Um, but I may find as I uh, discuss this or dig into it a little more that there are, I just don't know what the dimensions of these other suggestions are so I have to look into them and I guess. Well put it this way I guess I would not be very happy if we uh, found that uh, a neighboring town had purchased our lumber for a couple of hundred bucks and built a shelter for the little league and for their skating rink and uh, for their track storage shed and and things like that because I'm sure that we can mobilize the volunteers to do the same things mm -hmm. with that lumber which we've already paid for. Mm -hmm. So look at three or four and five figures <laughs> well, what, I, don't accept less than four figures. Four figures. High four figures. High four figures. High four figures. Four figures. <laughs> well, actually, we should know what we paid for it, and that should be <laughs> a consideration, shouldn't we? Well, it should be. Um, I'm not sure. Again, all I know is that uh, to be used as they are, they have to be inspected by some. I. 
I know this from talking with the structural engineer, that even though they look pretty weathered and um, unusable, uh, they would, he, you know, you can't test them to see how usable they are, but I, other than that, I do not know. Madam Chairman and Superintendent, is this anything we can vote on at the uh, 21st meeting since we are going into a special school board meeting? Good. Okay. Why don't we plan on that if uh, to have it ready by then? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Consideration of a request by the Superintendent to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing upcoming negotiations. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chairman, are we going to ask if there are any other comments from the audience? Some people have come in after the agenda item closed. Okay, are there other comments from the audience on the space study? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a motion to enter executive session? So moved. Second? Further discussion? No. no? <laughs> oh, okay, all in favor. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs>